Welcome back to another park review. Today, I will be talking about the second park I visited while I was in California. This is Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. Everyone knows about this place. They're one of the most famous parks in America. It's been featured in multiple Hollywood movies, and it's just one of the coolest places I've ever been to. I had the chance to visit this park in March of 2019, and when I first pulled up to the park, I immediately knew I was going to love this place. Every enthusiast has this place on their bucket list, mainly because of their coaster count. It has the most roller coasters of any park in the world, 20. Soon to go back down to 19 because of the recent announce announcement of the closure of Green Lantern First Flight, which has been SBNO since 2017. So I did not get that credit. Out of the 21 credits at this park right now, I only missed five. Both sides of Superman Escape from Krypton, Green Lantern First Flight, Apocalypse, and of course, their new for 2019 coaster, West Coast Racers. I also didn't even enter the area Cyclone Bay, because as you know, it was getting ready for its transformation into the underground, the newest area of the park, which is where West Coast Racers is going, and it's also where Apocalypse is. But I didn't get to ride it, because as you know, Apocalypse was getting retracked when I was there. But I still enjoyed just walking around looking at all the other areas of the park, the coolest area definitely had to be the Scream Punk District, which is where Twisted Colossus and Scream are located. And as the name would suggest, it has a nice steampunk theme. This place just really looks cool, and there really are some beautiful spots around the area. Some say this park is mainly an asphalt park, and I agree, but there are still areas that are really photogenic, like the main plaza where you see New Revolution's Loop and Tatsu's Pretzel Loop in the background. Even when you drive up to the park, there's a couple photogenic moments. Okay, let's just start this review. When you go to the parking lot, you'll notice that it's kind of in a weird location relative to the rest of the park. <clears throat> it's on the side of the park. So when you go to park, you're going to have to walk about 10 minutes just to get to the entrance. So that was the first weird thing I noticed with this park. However, there are trams that will take you to the entrance. But if you don't take those, you will be walking like I did both days. However, I parked in the preferred parking, so that wasn't a big deal for me. When you get to the entrance, you walk under this really cool arch, and from there, you can either go right to enter Hurric Hurricane Harbor, which is their water park, and it was closed when I went, or you can go left to enter the main park. Walking up to the main gate, I noticed that Magic Mountain's front gate looked kind of ugly. It felt kind of like more it felt more like a prison than it did an amusement park. I think that's one thing Magic Mountain can change. They really need a nice front gate. Give them something like the entrance to that Six Flags Fiesta Texas has, or even give them like a good Cedar Fair entrance. So then you enter the park and you immediately see rides like New Revolution, Tatsu, The Carousel, Full Throttle, and quite a few others. It's just one of many photogenic places in the park. From there, you can either go right to go to rides like Full Throttle, Goliath, Twisted Colossus, and a few others, or you can go to the left for Viper, Tatsu, and X2. And um, that's also where their River Rapids ride, Roaring Rapids, is. All the coasters at Magic Mountain, if you were wondering, do have bins on the platform, with the only exception being X2, which uses lockers. And by the way, the placement of X2's lockers is just mean. You're about to get into the station, and then an employee walks up to you and tells you, oh, you're going to have to put your stuff in a locker. Give us a dollar. But if you don't have money, they will kick you out of line. So you just wasted about three hours of time, three hours of waiting in the X2 line to only have to be kicked out. The only ride that I'd actually not have a problem with having lockers is Twisted Colossus, so the ride can duel more often. But when I went, it didn't duel, not even once. So I don't know, it might improve that. Now, one thing I want to talk about real quick is the park layout. So the park is technically a complete circle, but when I went, Construction on the underground blocked out quite quite a bit of the pathways. So for me, the layout was really odd when I went. Like, the Baja Ridge area of the park, that was one of the weirdest areas, especially when you go to find X2's entrance. Apparently, there's a sign on this bridge that has the X2 logo, and it says, X2 entrance this way. So then you have to take the bridge across the land just to get to the entrance to X2. But hey, at least it looks nice, and you can still get there. And that's another thing. You can really tell which areas of the park are old and which ones have had a recent update. You can see it throughout the whole park. 
So, I mean, at least the old areas still look nice, but you can tell they haven't been updated in a long time. But yeah, the, the lands in this park still look really nice, Baja Ridge included. And of course, I already mentioned the Scream Punk District. They have a small land near Full Throttle called High Sierra Territory, which is like an old country type of feel. They have like these tall trees around the area. They look really nice. And I really like the smell in that area. It really smells nice, which I don't know why, but I like it over there. But the weirdest land in the whole park had to be Samurai Summit. There are only two ways to get to the top of Samurai Summit. You either have to take this really long spiraling pathway near the entrance to Gold Rusher, which can be quite a strenuous walk. And that's just one thing about this park. A lot of the sections of Magic Mountain are uphill, but it's most noticeable for Samurai Summit. Or you can take the helpful Honda Express near New Revolution, which takes about a minute and a half to get to the top. And yeah, it's just Magic Mountain really needs to work on pathways to get to Samurai Summit because those are the only two ways and they both take quite a bit of time. There really needs to be more pathways to get to the top. Like, put one near Tatsu or something. They could easily put one near Tatsu that goes up near the entrance of Ninja. And that really can also apply to the rest of the park, not just Samurai Summit. Some of these areas could really use better pathways. And another thing I found to be kind of odd with the park layout was that both of their kids' areas were right next to each other. These are Bugs Bunny Boomtown and Whistle Stop Park. They were both literally side by side, which is something I haven't seen at many amusement parks. And that's where all the kids' rides are. There, That's the only spot where you can find kids' rides. There are none anywhere else in the park, which can be good at times for families. But if you want to go across the park to a ride like Riddler's Revenge or X2, there's no kiddie rides over there. So there won't be anything for the younger kids to do, which can make them kind of bored while you want to ride the bigger rides. So that can be a good thing and a bad thing. But I don't have kids and I don't plan on having kids. So that's not a big deal for me. But for large families, that can be quite a bit of a problem. Also, for those of you credit whores out there, Magic Mountain has four kiddie coasters. They have Roadrunner Express, Canyon Blaster, Speedy Gonzalez Hot Rod Racers, and Magic Flyer. You can get all four of those really quickly because they're all right next to each other. All right, let's get into the rides. For the most part, I approve of Magic Mountain's coaster lineup. Twisted Colossus is great. X2 was amazing. Tatsu was kind of surprising. And the other rides there were fine, like Riddler was okay. They have a Batman clone here. New Revolution was cool. Goliath was kind of underwhelming, and I really did not like Viper. Some of the rides that went were closed when I went, which, for the most part, some of them were understandable, like Roaring Rapids was closed because of the season, Tidal Wave was closed, Jetstream was closed, and everyone knows that Green Lantern First Flight has been closed for a long time, but that has been said to come down soon, so, yeah. Oh, and speaking of Green Lantern First Flight, I happened to go the day it tested for the first time since 2017. This park also does have quite a few flat rides. They have a Zamperla Giant Discovery called Crazanity, which I didn't get to do. They also have a few flat rides in the DC Universe area. Oh, and they also have a dark ride, Justice League Battle for Metropolis, which I did do. And one thing I want to point out real quick, the operations at this park are fine, but some of them really can be slow, like on X2 or even at one point Riddler's Revenge. So for the most part, Magic Mountain's ride collection is okay, but I do think they could use a, use a couple more good flat rides and, of course, sprinkle around some more kiddie rides. One thing that I want to talk about that Magic Mountain does differently than other Six Flags parks I've been to is their Flash Pass. You might know that at Fiesta Texas and Over Texas, they use these little pads with buttons on them. So you can use the buttons to reserve rides. But at Magic Mountain, they require you to slide on a touch screen to reserve rides. It wasn't too much of a problem. It took me a little while to figure out how to do it. And then once I did, it wasn't that bad. But I thought it was weird enough to point out. But one thing that I didn't like at Magic Mountain, which is something that not a lot of people really care about, but sometimes I do, was their merchandise selection. Magic Mountain didn't really have that much good merchandise. Like, I really wanted a Twisted Colossus t-shirt, or even an X2 one, or even a Magic Mountain one. But they didn't really have anything good. They didn't even have the logos on the shirts, but I did end up getting a Magic Mountain hoodie because it was raining the day I went. But it wasn't really that detailed, but it was fine. Speaking of the rain, do keep in mind that most rides will close down in the rain. When I went the first day, I managed to get, I think, about 10 of their credits. 
before it started to rain, and I was going over to Twisted Colossus, and it closed down because of it. Ob now, obviously, Lex Luthor Drop of Doom, their drop tower, and Superman Escape from Krypton also closed. Crazanity closed. Goliath closed. X2 closed. And I also think Tatsu and Viper did, too. And then when it stopped raining, the rides did reopen, with the exception of Twisted Colossus. That stayed closed the rest of the day, so I had to go back on Saturday to get that, and also do Viper, because I missed that, too. So if you know it'll rain the day you go, make Twisted Colossus your top priority. Because if you don't, eh, you're probably going to miss it if it rains. Now, the lines for the rides aren't that long. But when I went, they weren't. But there were still quite a few long ones, like for X2 and Full Throttle. But some rides do have a single rider line, which I didn't need to use because I had Flash Pass. And most lines weren't that long when I went. However, here lies a problem. Even though I knew that certain rides, like New Revolution and Riddler's Revenge, had single rider lines, I don't think I ever saw them when I went to ride. I just didn't see them. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but I did not see a sign anywhere, so they might be kind of hard to find. So Magic Mountain could probably do a better job at pointing out where they are. And just overall, they could do a better job at pointing out just where ride entrances are. It took me quite a while to find out where the entrance to Superman Escape from Krypton was, Ninja, and at one point, even X2. Let's drive away from the rides a bit and just talk about the park's food. Now, the food at Magic Mountain isn't anything special. It's just your typical run-of-the-mill Six Flags food. They have a Johnny Rockets and a couple other places. But I ate at Big Belly Burger, and, you know, it was fine. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was just middle of the road for me. Now, there are shows at this park, too. But I didn't really see any, so I can't talk about them here. But they do have a theater in the Scream Punk District. They have one in the High Sierra Territory. And then there's a few others around the park. One final thing I want to bring up is the employees at Magic Mountain. For the most part, the employees were really nice at this park. However, I did run into a small problem at one point at Big Belly Burger. So, I was in line to get something to eat. I got my food. And then I went to go take a sip of my drink. And I realized that they gave me the wrong drink. Okay. So I went up to go and ask them if they could get me the correct drink I asked for. But I guess they didn't hear me. So I asked again a little bit louder this time. And they still didn't respond. So I don't know if they just couldn't hear me or if they were ignoring me. So I waited for about 10 minutes. Okay. They served someone their food. And right when they were done and were going back, I asked them again if they could get me my drink. But they just flat out ignored me. They didn't even bother to ask what I wanted. So I just ended up leaving. So, I wasn't a big fan about that encounter. Like, yeah. So, watch out for that. Overall, I really enjoyed walking around this park. I loved looking at everything. However, some people do complain about this one area near New Revolution's Helix where it smells really bad. But when I was over there, I didn't really smell anything. So, I don't have anything to talk about about that. But, you know, some people have complained, so I'd still watch out around that area. So, for my final thoughts, if you're in the area, definitely try and squeeze in this park. It really is worth it, especially for X2 and Twisted Colossus alone. This is easily a top three Six Flags park, along with Six Flags Fiesta Texas. And even though I still prefer Fiesta Texas, I would definitely come back to this park. But that's just my opinion on Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. Let me know your thoughts about this park in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.